Hey there, Tundra Nation. Do you like nonsensical garbage content that is just recycled jokes from what is essentially the poly shore of the gun community? Well then, boy, do I have a treat for you, because we're roasting more rifles today. If you're unaware, there is an experimental treatment available for those who experience male pattern baldness. By simply subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell, there is a .0013 chance that my writer might actually someday grow a beard. As for my hair, well, that's a lost cause. Also, don't forget to use the hashtag TundraNation in your comment to get a guaranteed reply from Eric or myself in the first hour of the video. One last plug, a member of our team is getting ready to deploy in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and has decided to see for himself if alien gears are up to the advertised standards as a duty holster. And he ordered one. Well, these guys pulled a Tundra and accidentally sent two. And when he contacted them, Cassandra at customer service told him to keep the second one and give it to another soldier. We've never had any sort of affiliation with this company and I'm not even really prepared to endorse any of their products yet. But that is pretty cool of them, and I just wanted to give them kudos for that. Now, let's start hurting some feelings. Well, it seems the owner of this gem decided he didn't want to tell us anything about this rifle. He just posted a picture of it and apparently thought we should just automatically know everything required to properly roast it. Well, as fate would have it, we don't know much about this thing. But we do know that you are the entitled Karen type who wanders around department stores on the hunt for managers so you can scream and flail your arms wildly in the hopes of getting a gift card. Meanwhile, that poor teenager that was originally trying to help you with some unreasonable request softly is crying in the corner. You probably think you're King Dingling because you live in a 3,000 square foot home and you drive a late model Chrysler. Even though you are drowning in so much credit card debt that your significant other is barely able to stay afloat while you're waiting for your LuLaRoe business to really take off. While you strut around Sears feeling like you're better than every other employee in the place, you're secretly dreading home because you know your kids are probably smoking pot in the basement. Oh yeah, your rifle kind of looks like an EBR, which stopped being cool right around the time Mark Huckabee screamed utter nonsense to people he just disappointed. The list of parts for this build is way too long to even consider trying to fit all of them into a 10 minute bit. I do feel like this pile of trash has gotten the Dr. Frankenstein treatment so bad that I'm waiting for it to rise up and start terrorizing the locals any minute now. I mean, I can just imagine a village of slumbering anti-gun idiots pouring out of their homes with their pitchforks and torches, just trying to send this thing back to whence it came. Now, I totally understand that anybody with any sense at all would fight off this affront to God by using another, better, gun. But since they're anti-gun, they clearly have no concept of equal or greater force. And in all honesty, they'll probably just use some poorly worded legislation containing verbiage that drops some coins into old Zuck's pockets for some reason to just try to fight this whole thing off. All the while, it's still running around terrorizing people with the fact that it has a bipod, even though a 5.56 round is basically anemic after 500 yards. We can't help but also notice the lack of iron sights while using a Bushnell scope that has enough magnification to see into the future. Hey man, does my hair ever grow back? Ah, damn. Well, I guess that's too bad. Thanks for listing all the parts, bud. Unfortunately, you forgot to leave a too long did not read at the end. A guy with the username Freedom posted this one. And if you don't enjoy the irony in that, then you might want to stop chewing on paint chips for long enough to read a book. Or better yet, just watch Enemy at the Gates. To my knowledge, that movie is 100% historically accurate, and the best part is, no reading! Unless you turn on the subtitles, and then you're just a monster. Don't we all miss the days when you could just head on down to the hardware store and get yourself a crate full of these garbage rods for an hour of hard labor and a crisp high five? Now, these boat oars actually cost more than some purpose-built boat oars. I suppose that's actually kind of fair, because these rifles can actually be somewhat accurate if you can find the right type of ammunition that wasn't made with child labor before the Industrial Revolution. It's really nice to see a gun like this that hasn't been totally bastardized. But if you really want to improve upon your investment, I think you need to get an ATI stock, break out the old Dremel, add a scout scope, and drop it onto arms list for a thousand bucks with the closing statement in the description listing being 
Price is firm. I know what I've got. If Magpul has created an accessory that's not on this gun yet, don't tell this guy. You couldn't be more of a 2008 gravel pit operator if you tried, dude. I have to imagine that this gun was accessorized prior to Obama's first term when gun tubers were pretty hard to come by and Nut and Fancy was one of the best options for firearms entertainment and education. Woo hoo hoo! Boy, those sure were some dark times. Thank God you came to us so we could tell you that fixed carrying handles and a traditional front sight post are for idiots who don't understand that iron sights officially became useless the day the Aimpoint Pro hit the civilian market for the first time. I really do want to like the OD green color choice, but I can't stop staring at that awful Delta ring and comparing it to having a night out with the boys in a nursing home. I mean, loose skin, and sagging, and all that. You know what? Honestly, never mind. It's just time to inject some bleach into my frontal cortex right after I throw up on camera for the second time on this channel. Man, I gotta, I gotta quit drinking. Ooh, you clearly put about as much effort into this picture as you did into your username. At this exact moment in time, James Yeager is rolling in his grave. Wait, what? Oh, he's not dead? Well, don't show him a picture of this rifle then. Surely this man has made it his personal goal to futterize the most beautiful symbol of tactical prowess and freedom that the United States of planet Earth has ever known by covering this poor rifle in rotting tree carcasses. And then he has the audacity to actually be proud of it. Listen buddy, wood belongs on deer rifles and commie trash, not on your AR-15, you filthy, filthy degenerate. I was going to gloss over the fact that there is no method of aiming actually attached to this rifle, but I assume that your sexton is probably with your gunsmith getting recalibrated. I put down a lot of people in my day for disgusting behavior, but you, sir, have abused your right to bear arms, and I recommend you take a vision quest to the tomb of Eugene Stoner and beg forgiveness for your sins while you contemplate all of the other atrocities against nature that you're sure to have committed. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Uh, here we see a rifle that is owned by a man who has simply decided he no longer cares. He's likely on his third wife and has finally gotten that prenup that allows him to hit on the underage waitress at TGI Fridays without any sort of monetary repercussions that'll come out of the impending divorce. He drinks heavily not because he's unhappy, but because he likes when his feet get super warm once the buzz kicks in. His motorcycle was a product of a midlife crisis and is a Harley Davidson made up of mismatched parts spanning two decades of production within the company. Judging by that muzzle brake, he also doesn't give half a shit about your ability to hear oncoming traffic after using the stall next to him at the range. None of the furniture is even matching on this rifle. But honestly, why would he care? He's not trying to impress you. He's just trying to shoot pumpkins filled with tannerite and then go bang some skanks that he finds at the bar after chugging 17 natty lights with the boys and losing last week's paycheck trying to hustle at the pool table. You know what, man? We're actually kind of proud of you. Live your best life, bro. That about does it for this episode, folks. If you disliked the video, then you probably tried to submit your entry to the series through Facebook. Like a boomer. But if you liked the video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon page to stay up to date on current and future content. And if you feel like repping some Tundra swag, follow the link in the description below to our new store on Teespring. Thanks for watching, Tundra Nation, and you can now find us on Instagram at TundraTacticalMN.